So today we're going to do a little texturing demo. But um, instead of just doing it the way I've shown you previously, I'm going to show you a new cool little way to do it. And how we go about doing this is I'm going to show you with a polyplane. I'm going to take that polyplane and just scale it up. And now I'm just going to do the texture on this one object. And the reason I'm showing you on this particular object is if I go to my UV editor, you'll see right here, if I turn on my blue, it is already unwrapped for me. Um, so that's always a really nice feature. So one of the things I'd like to do from here is I want to double check that if I go to my Windows, Setting Preferences, and go to my Plugin Manager, I want to make sure I can export this as an OBJ. OBJ format standing for Object. Now, it is a standard 3D format for non-animated objects. So any type of mesh that you are um, export bundle, see, it'll be called right here, obj export dot bundle, hit loaded and auto load, refresh, close. So now, um, FBX is usually for, um, is your standard file type, and file, export, export selection in this case. I'm going to put it on my desktop, and I'm going to call this one, um, Projection texturing. Now the really cool thing about this is we're going to change this file type to OBJ export. And this allows us to open this 3D mesh up in Photoshop, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. And I'm going to go File, Open, and go to my desktop, and then find Projection texturing. And you're going to see it's this little 3D object. And I'm going to click Open. And I'm going to click OK. And it says, you are about to create a 3D layer. Would you like to switch to the 3D workspace? Yes. So going back to what I was saying, this will um, maneuver a little bit different. So make sure you have your arrow selection and your rotate tool. And now you can rotate your 3D space. And there is your object, which is really, really awesome. Going back in here to Google, um, it could be anything. So um, let's see, the brick texture. It doesn't matter what it is, honestly, um, because for this particular thing, or cobblestone, let's do cobblestone, because it looks like I could bring it in as a floor. Cobblestone texture, seamless. So I'm going to go with something like, um, one of these, I don't know which one yet. I'll go with this one because I think I can show you a lot of different things with the uh, cobblestone. So, copy image. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm also going to show you how to create a normal map. And first things first is when I'm creating this, I need to make sure I go to my layers. and. Um, back to what I was saying originally before I got um, carried away with the rest of this tutorial is that FBX exports are generally for um, 3D models with animation attached to it with joints and things like that because FBX stands for film box. Um, it retains a whole lot more information whereas an OBJ can only retain the standard mesh format, no animation or anything like that. So um, Photoshop can read OBJ files because it's just the 3D mesh. Now, in here I've got my diffuse and my initial shading group. And if I double click here, these are my UVs. And it shows you in triangles because um, Photoshop is converting this to triangles, which we've already talked about how Maya or any 3D um, software reads topology, it breaks it into triangles. So it's already done that for us. Now, if I wanted to, I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to go directly atop this object, and I'm going to paste in my cobblestone, and I'm going to simply make it about that large, just to show you, and then I'm going to right click and press merge down. And now you'll see 
my texture is applied on there. And if I go to over here, you'll see there's my texture. Now if I click a new layer, go back here, and let's just say I wanted to do some things as far as color directly on it. And the, the tools are different the way you rotate in here uh, using this arrow selection. You can change the way you rotate um, up here, roll the camera, orbit the camera, pan the camera, slide the camera, and zoom the camera. So I'm good with this right here, but I want to go ahead and show you if now that I created a new layer in my texture, and let me go ahead and make this much larger and softer. And if I wanted to sort of highlight some things or low light some things, I can do that. And then come down here. And I'm just giving you a quick example here. All right, so that's good. So I'm just showing you how I can do some low lights and things like that. And if I wanted to go over and do some highlights, let's go back here. And you'll see on my layer two, if I hide it, and of course it doesn't want to reappear. I don't know where it went. It was there for a second. Double click on my initial shading group. Let me close out of this. Sometimes it needs to refresh. Don't save. I'm going to double click here. Ah, oh, there it is. So it needed to refresh its texture and you'll see it's on layer two, which is good. I'm also going to change like the um, something like that. I'll create a new layer and now I'm going to go back here and I'll switch to white and I'm going to go through and sort of do some other just manual adjustments here. And this is just to show you that you can physically hand paint directly on this. So now if I go back here, it's all there and I'm going to change this to soft light. And you'll see I get a little bit more differential in my um, if I wanted to add more. And of course, if I go back here, you'll see it updates. And if I go back here, let's do, um, something like graffiti words. And let's go here, copy image, and create a new layer, and let's see if it updates. I think it did. And I'm going to merge this one down, right click, merge down. And actually before I do that, what I'm going to do is get rid of some of this white area. I'm just going to hit delete and bring my brush size smaller, even smaller than that. Okay, that's good. So I'll keep that one. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to merge down. Go back here. It should be on my new layer. There we go. And it's it was there for a second, so it looks like it needs to refresh. I'm going to close out, hit don't save, and now I'm going to double click again, and you'll see it's there. And here I can run a multiply, and it sort of looks like I've got this graffiti right atop here. Um, and you can mess around with any of these other things, but just to give you guys an idea that now I've also got this um, texture that I just created just by projecting this these images directly from um, uh, online that I found and I can project them directly onto the mesh which also directly puts it onto the UVs which is awesome. So from here, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to Command Shift S and I'm going to save this file out on my desktop and I'm going to save it out as the large document file as it says. I'm going to save it out as a um, PSD file just in case and click save. And I'm also going to save it out as a TGA and call this uh, cobble art. I think there's two L's in there. Or wait, maybe not. I don't remember. Uh, do, 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 do. Two B's, that's what it is. There we go. Cobble art. And I'm going to click Save, 32 bits, and click OK. And now from here, I'm going to go into Maya, select my mesh, turn off the grid because I don't need it right now, assign new material, do a blend this time. I'm going to click the checker box on color, go to File, click the folder go to where I saved the file to, cobblestone art dot here, open, press 6. Now we've got that, and one other thing I need to do is I'm going to bring down my reflectivity, bring this down and bring this down for the time being, and other things I can do is I'm going to go to filter. What, I, what I'm also actually first going to do is I'm going to create a duplicate of all these, and I'm going to hit command E to merge them. Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Map. And I'm going to click OK, just because. And this is what a normal map looks like. And I'll discuss this further in class. And I'm going to save this out as Cobble Art Normal. And I'm going to save this as a TGA. And I'm going to click Save, click OK. Go back here. And I'm going to go to Bump Mapping. Click the checkerboard box. Press File, change it, use as bump to use as tangent space normals. OK. Click the bump depth. Uh, here we go. Make sure you go to File 2 and then open up that. And then Cobblestone Normal and click Open. And now I'm going to go to Render and change it to High Quality. And you're going to start to see. Maybe not so much at the moment, but you'll see it in yours a little bit better, the depth that's happening here. And one other thing we can do is a layers, hide this one, and I'm going to duplicate these. And I can do a specular map. And this I'm going to do by image adjustments. And I'm going to do black and white. And I'm going to click Auto for now and click OK because I'm not too concerned about it. And now I'm going to save this out as a TGA. And I'm going to call this one Cobble Art Specular. Save. OK. Go back here. And now under Specular Color, I'm going to click here. Go to File. Open. Cobble Art Specular and click Open. And if now I adjust my highlights here, you'll see that I get a much different sheen on the object itself and it'll highlight weird and things like that. But, um, and it's all just on a flat 2D surface, so you should start to get some cool depth on it even though it is a flat surface. Um, and you should be able to see some of the different cool highlighting on there as well. So, um, that's what we got here for um, our uh, texturing demo and uh, different types of mapping. Um, thanks for watching and see you next time.